Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be creating a simple modal pop-up. Okay guys, so this is what we're actually creating today. So as you can see, I've built this web page out for you already, so you don't have to build an actual web page to see this working. Um, and when we click on the click me, we get this little pop-up with this little form inside there. Obviously it doesn't send, we're not interested in doing that today. And you can click the cross and it can disappear. So obviously with this modal, it can be anything. It could just be text, it's totally up to you. I'm just showing you how to make this pop up. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna create, so I'll show you where we are now in CodePen. We're just on this standard page. We click the click me and it doesn't do anything. So the first thing we actually wanna do is create this sort of semi-transparent black background. And the way we do that, if we go to the bottom of our HTML, to the modal section, and let's create a div called, and we're going to use Emmet. So if you haven't used Emmet before, it just creates divs. You can create other things as well. So if we say .bg uh, dash um, modal, then hit tab, Emmet knows, because we just use dot, that it's going to create a div, and the dot is a class. So it gives it the class name of bg modal. So there you go again. So BG modal. Um, let's jump down to the bottom of the CSS. Let's start styling that modal then. So we're going to say dot BG dash modal. And we're going to say, right, so it needs to be uh, the full width. Oops, the full width, which is 100%. And the full height, because it covers the whole of the background, 100%. Uh, and we also want it to be a background color. And you might think that to make an, a semi-transparent background color, we do this. So background color black. And then you might think we do opacity 0 0.7 or something like that. 0 to 1 for opacity, 0 being totally see-through, 1 being solid color. Um, now, we also need to tell that background modal to lay over the top of the content because uh, at the moment it's flowing in the document. So we can say position. So we're saying position this div absolutely. And when you say absolute, you have to say where this is going to be now because it's not flowing in the document. So we can say to, um, top. So we want to start at the top, zero. Right, and there you go. You can see it's slightly see through. It's actually kind of what we want. But the problem with this method is when we go back to our HTML to add the content, so this white box. Um, what it will do is this. So I'll make another div container. So dot modal dash contents, our content, hit tab. And now we can style this modal content, right? So we're going to say dot modal dash content. And we're going to say we want the width to be like 300 pixels, something like that. Oops, 300 ppx. Um, 300 pixels and we want the height to be well let's say height 300 pixels let's say the width 500 pixels now we need to give it a background color background color of that white because it's a solid white color and now you can see we haven't said give this modal an opacity and you can't go and say opacity one to give it all opacity it doesn't work like that it inherits from the container it's within right so if i delete that opacity one there and delete the opacity from the bg background i'll show you how you would go about doing this so the the child elements don't inherit the opacity and you do that by using rgba on the actual color so red green blue alpha so alpha is the opacity channel so we want to say, we want zero red, we also want zero green, zero blue, and we want 0 0.7 of opacity. And there you go. Now, so opacity is right, and the actual contents modal is actually solid color. Uh, so let's position this modal, shall we? So we actually want, uh, what we can do is we can position it center, 
um, by using Flexbox. So if we jump onto the BG modal, so the background, and let's say display flex on this, because now this is the flex parent. And now we can say, okay, what do you want to do with all the elements inside of me? And I want to say, okay, we want you to be justify content center. So we want you to be centralized horizontally. And we also want you to be centralized um, vertically. So align items center. This is a really cool and quick way of centering things in the center of the page. So there we go, we're in the center, so we're looking good. Uh, the modal contents, let's do um, some border radius. Border radius, four pixels to make it look a little bit cooler. Right, now what do we need to do? Let's add some content. So we want to add uh, this little icon and these input fields and this button. So let's do that by um, going in here, typing IMG, and again with Emmet, you can just type IMG, then hit the, hit the tab button, and it will actually fill it in and get ready to accept a source. So I'm just gonna copy a link here. Uh, you can feel free to copy this link as well. Um, I'll leave it in the description as well, so you can just copy and paste it out there. So the IMG 100 there. Um, and we want to, it's not in the center. So shall we deal with that center now? Yeah, let's deal with that center now. So we can say in our modal BG, we can um, actually, no, we don't, yeah, yeah. No, let's do it in the modal content. So in the modal contents, we can just text dash align center, right? So everything inside here is centralized. Um, we can give some padding to this as well because it's right at the top at the moment. So let's give a padding of 20 pixels. Oh, give padding top, left and right, and bottom as well. Um, and let's add, go back to our HTML. So after the IMG tag, let's put in some, let's put in a form. So hit, type form then tab. Uh, we don't need any action. We'll just leave action blank. So then we can say input tab, type text is fine, input, tab, type text is fine. Uh, but let's give these placeholders. So placeholder inside the input tag. And you'll see in a minute, so when I type name here, you'll see on the left-hand side, that fills in the middle for us. Okay, so let's do the second one. Let's say email, placeholder equals e-mail. So it's looking pretty good. Then we want the submit button as well. Um, so we just made this out of uh, an anchor tag. So we say A, tab, and we already have the A tag for the click me button is already got styling on it. And the style is class equals button, right? You can see something there. So we just need to type in between the A tags, let's type in submit and it'll give us submit inside there. There you go. Right, we're all on one line and we want to kind of be on a couple of separate lines. So let's jump to the bottom of our CSS and type in input. So we're targeting these input fields. And let's say we want the width of these to be like 50%, right? So now there's not enough space on the one line because there's padding as well, remember? So it's thrown the email underneath. But then the submit is also next to the email and that is because the the input we want to make the input a block level element so basically block level elements say yo this whole line is mine whereas um inline elements say hey i can just go along with the flow of things you can come after me that's fine so the way we do that is we say display and i think we need to do yeah display block and you'll see now, right, so on its own line, but these are now to the left, right? And the reason that is, is because um, we have to do margin, margin zero auto to center things. So we want to say, don't have any margin at the top, but your left and your right want to be automatic. So if they're automatic, they're the same, so it has to work out themselves. So 
In fact, let's give a little bit of margin. So I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you this margin zero auto um, on these. Now you see how they're together. So the name, the bottom of the name, is in line with the top of the email. So if we change zero to say fifteen pixels, it's now going to put a space in between those guys, right? So we're looking pretty good here, actually. So um, let's now we need to work out this cross, don't we? This little thingy. So we can just jump back in here, and we can create a close button. So let's do it just above our image tag here. And we're just going to create a div and just call it dot uh, close, right? And hit tab. And instead of putting an X, which you think you might do, X is, you can see it there just above, just above my image. X's aren't actually a perfect cross. So the best way to do it is actually use the plus symbol. And you're thinking, well, that's not the right orientation. And we will twist it now in the CSS. But let's first, let's first go into our CSS, dot close, because now we're targeting that close class to style it. We need to actually give it a position. So we now need to take it out of the flow of the document again. So saying position, absolute, right? Now you can see it's moved to the left. Now, as soon as I say top zero, it's gonna actually think we're top zero of the page. So it'll actually jump out of here and it's moved actually right up here. You can barely see it, it's up here. And that's because it thinks it's taking its positioning from that modal, the modal background, instead of the modal contents. So the way we make it think top zero, we mean top zero of the modal contents, right? So we go to modal content and we say position relative on the modal contents and what that does is it basically says hey you can position yourself relative to me so if you're absolute i'm your closest parent so position absolutely to me and there you go it's right up there so it's not quite in the right position it wants to be on the right so let's say right 14 pixels and that should move it to the right that's a little small, so let's change that. Let's say font dash size, I don't know, 42 pixels, I guess. Right, we're looking a bit better. Um, let's say, let's now do the rotation. So we say trans, transform, and we're going to say rotate. And in parentheses, we're going to say the degrees. So we can say 45 DEG, 45 degrees, rotate. And there you go. And that's looking like a proper close button now, rather than the X, which is not quite symmetrical. Right, okay. So I think that's pretty good. You know, we can do we can do a few things like um let's see, cursor, pointer. So it's actually a pointer hand when we hover over it, so you know it's a close. Um, and things like that, but we won't bother at the moment. Um, so now let's jump into the JavaScript, shall we? Because now it's always open. So we don't want it to start open, do we? So we want it to be minimized effectively at the beginning. So we want to jump to the modal, BG modal, because if you make this display hidden, it will hide all its children elements as well, right? So, upside, not display hidden, display none. It will hide all its child elements. Still not working when you click the click me. So this is time for JavaScript. So what we want to do is we want to grab this button and basically say, when you're clicked on, you do something. So let's do that. Document. So look on the page for an element by ID. So an element with the ID of um button we're gonna say right so does our button have the id yes it does so there we go so look on the page for an element with the id of button 
and we're going to make you clickable. So add event listener. And what type of event listener is it going to be? It's going to be a click. So basically, now when you're clicked, you can do something. So function is to do something. So parentheses, and now we're in the function. So basically, on the page, find an element with the class of button, the ID of button, dot add event listener, parentheses, click, comma, function, right? And now we can do something. And now we can say, go to the documents, query selector. So this is basically saying, find a selector, find a tag with, and we're going to say dot modal, dot modal dash bg so we're using dot because it needs to know if it's a class or an id because we're using query selector so go on the page find dot modal bg and then i want you to change the display to flex because it's display none and the way you do that is you say dot style so basically go into the style sheet or inline style dot style dot display so I want you to change the style, and the style I want you to change is display, and now I want you to change that display to flex, right? Then parentheses. So when I click on this, it doesn't do anything. Why doesn't it do anything? Dot style dot display equals flex. Click add event listener document dot get element i id. Um, ah, have I called it modal BG? BG modal, right? So I'm going to go here and change this around to BG dash modal, right? So now I quickly save that. When I click me, there we go, we're open, but we can't close it because we haven't had added that event listener. So let's add the close function to it. So just underneath that function, that um, event listener, we're going to create another one. That's called document dot. And we're going to query selector again. So query selector. And we're going to look for something with a class of dot close, right? So that's the close button. So go into the document and find the dot close button, something with a class of dot close. And dot add event event listener to add an event listener to it same again click right and create a function so comma function parentheses curly brackets we'll finish with a semicolon and now what we wanted to do is we wanted to do it the opposite so we want to then say grab the document dot um query selector and we want it to grab dot was it dot bg yeah dot bg dash modal so grab that modal again and change the dot style property called display dot style dot display change that to none right so now give that a quick save when i click on it it should open because that is now style display flex when i click the x that is now style display none. So now we have a working mode, all right? Open, close. Okay, guys, there you have it. I hope that was nice and quick, nice and simple, and you guys could understand that. Uh, please let me know what you think about the video. Comment, like, subscribe, all of that. I'm trying to make these really quick um, tutorial videos so you're not sat at your computer for too long. I'm trying to explain them really in depth as well with these little things. So. Like I said, I hope you enjoy that, guys. And feel free to follow me on Instagram, Richard Codes, and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys have a good day, and I'll see you guys soon.